Okay, I'm back. This, uh, this cleanup item hunt is taking a bit longer than I had hoped. Would like to be a little more excited about it, but at this point it feels just like... Eh. Feels like an errand. More than... More than a power-up. Because I want, I want that payoff, man. I want to get that statue room so I can be like, Oh shit! This is awesome! So I can get back to, uh... Talking about such things. Talking about why that room is so awesome. I will get there. We will get there together as a family. <laughs> belch of <laughs> familial belch. Belch of this. God. Missile. It's missiles like that. That just... Are you kidding? Yeah, that's just too much for pain in the ass. Here we go. Alright, we're almost there. Let's see, how many more do we have going on? Which ones? Which ones? Oop. Oh. Sure to fall. It's just, uh, the Brinstar missiles that I missed. Got four more pickups. Wow, oh, man, trying to, trying to shift and get comfortable here. Knock it off, monsters. Aliens. Sorry. Not monsters. We all know that's man. Uh, tedious screw attack! Let's go! Quick, oh, get these things! Okay, for that matter, wasn't there another Meridia one? Hmm. I think I accidentally skipped over another Meridia one. Fuck! This is getting absurd. The easiest way to deal with this. Well, I gotta go up this way, regardless. Come up through Norfair. Get back in business. Oh yeah, there was one. <laughs> there was one pretty ridiculous one in Brinstar. One that is a little, a little bit of a pain to find because it's one of those you know order of operations things. You wouldn't you know incidentally find it on the way because you don't have. The X-ray scope. It takes you a while to get that. You gotta beep the Krakomeyer before you can get the grappling beam, I think. How did this happen? I think it was Krakomeyer to grappling beam to... You need the grappling beam to get the power bomb. Ah, oh, whatever. It's power bomb first. X-ray scope. And you're not likely to get the power bomb before you're here. Nonetheless, look at this shit. Yeah. Frr, missile. Okay. Boop, pop, beep. Okay, I think there was one in Meridia. Man, I gotta go back up. Back up through the glass tube. Okay. 
Well, I imagine, like, when you first go through this game and, and you get the x-ray scope, you want to, you kind of want to get in the heads of the, uh, well, I'll just say get in the head of the game itself, rather than talk about the devs, because, you know, why, well, they, they did an amazing job of, of, uh, designing it, of course, naturally, they, um, uh, there's sort of a, a mentality of thinking of the game itself as uh, like a puzzle opponent, so to speak. Like if you if you think of outsmarting the game, it's not you're not outsmarting the devs exactly because the you know the designers of the game aren't trying to trip you up. They want to present puzzles. Like any any like really good designer in a game like this. In a game like any, honestly. They want the game to present challenges to you that are well within your realm of understanding. Shit, that no, wasn't that way. Did I already No. Cause I Am I getting ahead of myself here? Hmm. This wasn't... Oh, right, because this is when I... Oh, yeah. Maybe I came back through here, but I want to go up. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. All right. Two more. But yeah, to to consider like the game itself to be a challenging opponent as far as puzzles and shit goes. That's good design because you you don't need to have everything spelled out for you in order to know that there may or may not be a puzzle for you. Like, you want to be able to think outside the box a bit and, like, do something that you feel that you wouldn't be expected to do. And then, when that pays off, it's, it's amazing. Because then you feel all clever. And I feel like that can be done deliberately with a game. Like, a game can be des designed to elicit that, that sort of opportunity. It's hard to do something like that without, like... Without the, the player feel like, feeling like they're being lied to, I guess? Like, if you... I'm trying to think of a, a good example. Like, if you, uh... If you present clues to tell the player that this is what they should do, and you complete 180 on them, then they're going to feel kind of betrayed. Oh, for fuck's sake. Like, uh, I don't know. If, for example, if I were to say, you know, show puzzles where you would shoot these guys, to make stairs, and that would lead you to the next area. If you present a scenario in which, you know, you've, you've already spelled that out to the player, but then you completely invert it with little to no... Oh, damn it. With little to no, uh... It's warning. Then, like, like say, if, uh... I think this... I think this needs to go away. God damn it. Like, say, if you would, if you were to then shoot one of these guys, 
and it would do damage to you. When there there would be no indication that that happens, that that feels like a bit of a betrayal. I mean, that's an impractical example, but it's just you know, it's an analogy, of course. I mean, I could I could try to pick out examples from this game, but it's it's hard to like say what was intentional and what's not if something is a little bit outside the box. Like, sequence breaking is outside the box itself. Sort of. But there was a lot of control exerted over what the player can cannot uh, get through. Like I mentioned before, the sandstone blocks, those are like the dev's last ditch and the uh, the one-way super missile walls, missile. Like those are kind of the last ditch. Like no, seriously, you can't go this way. Sort of uh, measures. Whereas, say, tile arrangement such that you can't get through an area without a high jump or a, uh... Oh no, I don't want to go this way. Or like, you supposedly, I should say, if you supposedly can't get through an area without a high jump or a spring ball or etc. Or screw attack. There are some ways around it, because... For example, blocks that are destroyed by screw attack can be destroyed by power bombs. It just takes a lot of finagling to like, get past an area that assumes that you would have screw attack. I guess that would be a decent enough example. You say getting getting a power up when you're not supposed to, like when you, if you're already aware that that power up exists, like that's. That's a replayability consideration, sort of. And that's one of those, like, the devs, they're not lying to you. This one, like... This is... This might be a good example, too. Like, this one's really hard to find. Just because you... You don't really pay attention to the fact that it's there. But it it's visible on screen enough to catch your eye. Like, it's one of those that plays with the rules. Yeah, I think this, that one's a good example. Like, you see these pipes. Enemies come out of them. You can't really interact with them much. Then you see, like, you see the map. It kind of has that, that stepped arrangement. And you go by, and you see these. You see, you see these enemies come out. You see this one, enemies come out. But if you're kind of proceeding a little more slowly than someone who's, oh, I don't know, played the game a thousand times, then you might notice, hey, there's one up there. You might, say, try to jump away from these guys to escape and say, oh god, oh no, another one. But then, you know, this is without screw attack. Maybe I'll just turn that off to spell this out a little better. Oops. And I guess, uh... Oh, I missed that. Oh, yeah. That's the spin I'm used to. Anyway, you would, like, jump over here and be like, Oh, God, they're... <laughs> anyway. Like, oh, God, they're coming at me. Oh, no, there's another one. But nothing comes out of it. They're like, oh, what happened there? Oh. You notice on the side of the screen... There was another little green part, so then... Yeah. It's... It's, it's playing with the rules that were kind of communicated by these other pipe ends, but it's moving it away from what it's meant before. It's not a complete inversion of it, because an enemy did not come out of it, so if you're, like, if you're attentive enough, then you can, you can see that, I guess. I guess that'd be the 
the way to put that. Okay, um... Is that it? Is that it? Oh shit! That was it! Bam! 2.30. Let me get back to where I was and I'm gonna I'll try out this episode. Turn this shit back on. Oof. Yeah, but I mean, that's that's what makes doing such things so difficult when it comes to game design. Uh, giving... Giving the player the opportunity to outsmart the game without making the game trying to outsmart the player, if that makes sense. Know what I mean? Because, like, outsmarting the player would be lying to him, essentially. Out and besides, the player doesn't want to feel fucking outsmarted. Unless you're actually playing a chess simulator. <laughs> and, like, even then. Fuck you, chess master. You ain't the boss of me. Alright, so I've got... Full ass reserve tanks. Got all the energy tanks. Mega missiles. Got mega super missiles. Super ultra missiles. Missile, missile, missiles. Boomity bams. And here we are. Where we left off a few episodes ago. I'm glad I actually did start talking about something that's more interesting than saying, oh, well, this was a pain in the ass. This is a fucking pain in my dick. I don't want to have to go get this one, but I'm going to go get this one. <sighs> okay. Alright, this time, I promise, next time, I go through that door. Uh, next time. <laughs>